Hello and welcome back to another edition that's highly inconsistent of the You Don't Know Shack podcast. I'm Andrew Holmes, K5PO. Thanks for visiting me and my shack. Today I want to talk about the Ritty machine that I'm building. So, as uh, many of you uh, that have been around for a while are probably aware, in order to actually operate Ritty, the first use cases of Ritty involved massive manual clanking Ritty machines, radio teletype, I believe is what they're using. Um, Ritty machines, these, uh, I think they've used them for uh, decades and decades. Um, but uh, those machines, of course, aren't, uh, aren't needed anymore. Uh, most of us can operate Ritty with whatever our standard uh, radio is we have in our shack. A couple examples I have here behind me. <coughs> Excuse me, but I've worked on. I've been working on specifically a a build out for Ritty performance, and I think I've uh, I've pretty much got it now. So, um, I've had the the Elecraft K3 now for um, I think it's been over a year at this point. Um, I think I got it last summer, if I recall, and it really is a fantastic rig. Um, it's really a pretty impressive rig, and one of the my favorite things about the Elecraft is that um, it's Fully customizable, so it's not a uh, one size fits all. Buy it and uh, you know find find the need for it sort of rig. Um, it's designed to specifically be able to do anything you really want it to do effectively in the world of of HF communications uh, in amateur radio, or, or of course even if you want to work well outside of that, um, the uh, there's IF outs uh, uh, for uh, for transverters and, and that sort of thing as well. Um, so really a, a very versatile rig. But you don't buy a one-size-fits-all Yellowcraft. You really buy what you need. Um, and since the rig can either be custom-built or um, custom, uh, either custom-built by Yellowcraft for you with the parts you specifically choose and the boards and components you specifically want to have in the rig, or you can choose the boards you want yourself in the configuration that meets your budget and your specific use case. For me... I knew when I, when I bought the Elecraft K3 um, that in order to be a viable rig for me, it had to put out 100 watts. Um, so I had to have the, the 100 watt amp within the rig. Um, and it had to do basically sideband well. Um, I really wasn't interested in having a lot of extra options built into it at first because I really wanted to see, frankly, if it was going to be useful for me, uh, if the rig was quite as impressive as, as, as many had made it out to be. Uh, and, and I'll be honest and say... I don't use the rig as much as I should, uh, partly because um, it ends up kind of being my secondary rig. Um, when I bought it, um, one, I wanted a, a solid HF backup rig or a solid a second HF rig, um, and I wanted something that was, would vi be viable for portable operations. Um, the the Elecraft K3 is very much both of those. It's, uh, it's quite clearly... Uh, a, a viable HF rig, and it's a great rig for portable use. Sorry for the uh, the camera adjustments here. Um, it's so so light, frankly, that uh, it ends up being really valuable and really useful for portable portable use. I have a uh, a seafoam case I have uh, purchased for it, and I can pack it all up in there. Uh, the K3 mic, um, what any wiring needed, um, as well as a little power supply, a little switching power supply. Um, I believe it's a PowerWorks brand power supply. But anyway, um, it is a, a fantastic little portable rig. And uh, to those that are looking at the KX3 um, versus the K3, uh, you know, more power to you, frankly. If you truly do want just extreme portability uh, and QRP operation, um, the KX3 probably can't be beat by anything. Um, but if you really want 100 watts anyway, and you were looking at the KX3 uh, plus the external amplifier, you might just consider the the K3 anyway if that's really important to you because it's so frankly not very big and it really is quite light. But I've went on a tangent that had nothing to do with what I wanted to talk about, which is the Ritty machine. Well, anyway, so I haven't been using the K3 as much as I might otherwise have preferred. So I wanted to find a way to increase my use of this radio in the shack. And one of my favorite modes is Ritty. I love Ritty contest operation. I frankly wish Ritty was more used outside of the contest environment. Once the contest close, come late Sunday night, the Riddy kind of falls off the band. With the exception of 
one glorious thing, which is um, really, you know, de-expeditions and, you know, uh, wanted DX entities, if they opt for digital, they tend to use ready. Um, you know, PSK and, and some of the other di digital modes would frankly get blown away um, in, in a in a pileup environment. But ready is, is quite stable and they're just taking usually the strongest signal there instead of just getting the waterfall destroyed and no one can decode anyone, which might be more common like a PSK sort of sort of contest or, or de expedition sort of environment. So anyway, I wanted to build the ready machine with my K3. So I'd use it more for ready operation. So I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to operate uh, uh, frequency shift keen FSK, true FSK um, ready with the K3. Um, I wanted to improve the filtering for the K3 for ready purposes. Um, and uh, and that's really kind of the core of what the K3 didn't need a whole lot else. It wasn't like it had poor selectivity or something that would uh, that would have mattered anyway. It was it's already a great receiver. Um, so I did a couple things uh, specific to the K3. Um, one is uh, I picked up this little, um, uh, it's a 15 pin to, to, to DB9 pin uh, 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 converter and it has like some optical isolators in there or something like that. Um, so what this is, in addition to the typical serial port that's on the back of the K3, the K3 also has a 15 pin accessory port. I frankly didn't really know what this accessory port was designed for or what use case I might have to use it. I've been using the serial port for a long time. Um, for what you typically use a serial port for, um, rig control, uh, frequency polling, that sort of thing, it's still used for that. So when you when you when you use this sort of thing, um, the serial port on the ready, uh, the basic one, um, will remain the port used for rig control. But the accessory port has, I believe, it's actually pin one on the little nine pin unit here, is actually for FSK. Frequency shift keen. Uh, so most ready and most digital modes in general, the, or a lot of digital modes in general these days, are AFSK, audio frequency shift keen. There's nothing wrong with AFSK. Um, the K3 is apparently rather exceptional at AFSK. Um, that said, FSK is kind of like the more classic way of doing the ready, and I kind of like that idea. Also, li I just like the idea in general that with frequency shift keen, true frequency shift keen, um, the mark and space are are speci are created within the radio, so oh, it's it's like a, I believe it's a binary uh, a transmission, so it's either on or off. It's simply saying mark on space off or whatever it may be, right? So the the computer and and the and the radio uh, the computer tells the rig on off on off on off. So the computer doesn't create any audio itself or any actual modulation itself. It just gives that basic code. The radio then actually shifts the frequency between the you know the ready mark and space to create the actual ready signal it's said that fsk or frequency shift keen can be a cleaner means of transmit so it might potentially have some advantage in terms of um, decode on the side of uh, the dx or the pileup or whatever it may be so anyway, i got this little optical uh, isolator and uh, uh, serial port to 15 port uh, converter off eBay. I'll, I'll try to remember to put the link um, in uh, the 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 uh, the info here of the video. Uh, but actually, it's worked quite well. Um, I don't know if any of the other ports are even active on this. Frankly, all I all I really cared about was uh, was the ability to use it for FSK, and so far it is working swimmingly for that. <coughs> the other thing I did to try to improve my ready performance in the K3 radio was to grab a new filter. Previously, I just had the 2.7 hertz 5-pole standard sideband filter that comes with uh, any K3 that you don't customize or build otherwise. I had no additional filtering. Again, wanted to start basic and build up from there. Well, this is the next filter I purchased. Um, it is the KFL3A400. This filter, I believe it's an NRAD produced, uh, NRAD manufactured filter. It is an eight pole filter at 400, um, four, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a, I have a, uh, the present one I have is a, uh, a 2.7 kilohertz filter. This is a 400 hertz filter, so significantly more narrow filter. And I understand uh, this filter is actually a, a, shat, uh, a, a shade more narrow than 400 hertz, actually. 
Um, but the design of the, and the intention of this is to have even more exceptional roofing filtering capabilities specifically for ready use of, but this could be used for most any data mode that's not wider than 400 um, hertz uh, of course C cw and psk or whatever would all work well within this within this range as well although some may want a yet narrower filter perhaps 250 hertz um, I, I want it to not go too narrow um, for, for the sake of ready operation um, Okay, so I've added this as well, and I'll say an, another another note um, about the K3. If you want to do something to it, it's easy. Um, I did I did buy mine as a bag of parts. Um, so when I got my K3, um, I just ordered up the specific parts I want. Elcraft had them shipped out here, pronto, um, and I put it together here uh, at, at the station. Um, it's easy. I'm not a particularly uh, technical person in terms of radio manufacturing. And you don't need to be. Um, it's really like I built my own PC, which is basically to say I put boards, I connected other boards to a motherboard and powered it up. The K3 is not entirely, is not particularly dissimilar to that. It's very easy. It's a bit more technical than that, granted, but not much. If you're competent at all, you can put together a K3. So anyway, I put together my K3 initially. Um, so I took it back apart, at least as much as I had to, for the installation of the filter. And you don't really need to take the, the K3 apart much for the filter. Basically, the top and bottom covers off, drop the filter to the top, put a screw through the bottom, the filter's good to go. You, you change the configuration and the K3 configuration settings so it knows where the filter's at. Boom, you're golden. Filter, roofing filter, as you desire. While I was in there, I did something else, though, too. It doesn't really have anything to do with Riddy, um, but I'll note it because I'm already talking. Um, I added the K3 DVR assembly. So this is the DVR board. Uh, so in my use so far of the K3, one thing that I found to be uh, um, painful, uh, a painful omission of my, my own doing was to not have ordered the DVR board initially. Um, so anyone that does sideband contests, anyone that um, works DX, it's pretty hard to get where there may be a polyp and you're calling again and again, really trying to work um, the DX or whatever it may be. You realize there's a great value in having a voice keyer. I don't want an outboard voice keyer. Also, of course, the the Yaesu FT uh, FT2000, um, which has been a, a rig I've really enjoyed for a long time. It has, of course, a voice keyer in it. I have a little keyer pad as well here on the desk. I can, you know, be in a pileup or something. I can tap, uh, you know, my, tap the button for my call sign, so I'm not shouting the same thing again and again. Uh, you know, until I go horse in a contest, it's invaluable if you're working sideband to be able to call CQ or sh share some basic exchange information without, you know, again, speaking constantly and wearing yourself out, which is cause a great cause of fatigue um, in sideband contests. And you can hear some of the ops that don't have it at the end of the contest. They're like, G5PO, <coughs> VPO, 59. Anyway, so you don't want to you don't want to sound like that. So voice gear is great. I didn't have one for the K3. So a simple addition of this DVR board um, uh, did that uh, fine business. And also, from a PC control perspective, added something called I believe it's K Keys, um, which uses um, it's a program that allows you to set some uh, some macros up or keystrokes uh, to. Uh, trigger the key functions on the other craft. I think I have some some function keys right now set up uh, to trigger some of the the DVR memories um, in the other craft, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so again, uh, you know, I've only got uh, we had the uh, North American uh, uh, QSO party ready um, was last weekend. Um, first chance for me to really kind of test the uh, the K3 out since I've added the the uh, um, the, the the filter to it to help it get uh, you know better uh, better filtering um, in a more narrow mode like like ready as well as the the frequency shift keying uh, um, uh, a converter there and just kind of re to reiterate I'm not sure if I mentioned this so basically if you have a regular serial port on your computer you'll get a regular serial cable you'll connect that to your computer and the regular serial cable to this side of the adapter. And then this side of the adapter arrived to your K3. So you don't need a special cable that you probably don't already have laying around. Um, then if you select that particular COM port, it'll recognize that, that 
first pin as the one that handles frequency shift keen, and you're off to the races. <clears throat> so my initial experience um, so far um, using FSK and the filter with the K3 is it is damn solid. Um, definitely uh, outperforms my signal link uh, and the uh, FT2K. Um, uh, the, I, I think the the audio um, feed coming out of the K3, frankly, with its own isolator that it has for the audio line in and line out, seems to be quite exceptional. Um, and of course, the FSK Keen is rock solid. Um, so altogether, very happy with that. And the filtering is very nice for adjacent signals being gone. Uh, so that is the Elecraft K3, the ready machine that I'm building. Uh, and it's been quite awesome so far. I look forward to trying it out in some more contests and chatting with you on the waves. Till next time, Andy Holmes, K5PO. Take care.